this section we are uh, I would be giving an overview of the modern blast furnace. So, this uh, below figure shows the layout of the modern blast furnace, it is a top view. Um, so, so, this is showing about the raw, raw material um, from where the iron ore, coke, flux, sinter, or pellet, whatever it goes to there, and uh, um, using the conveyor belt it drops into the blast furnace. Then you have a select granulation unit, select pit to house, then you have a gas cleaning unit and you burn the gas in the stove and you put it uh, through the tier the hot airs and hot metal track is over there. The next one is going to so, you better I will give you a better view of this. So, again here you have the um, raw material yard from where you can get the cork, iron ore and sinters and through this conveyor belt skip using the top bell you charge the material into the blast furnace and top cases comes out from here and to the dust catcher. So, you collect the all dust particles goes to the scrubber further uh, collecting the dust and then it goes to the electrostatic precipitator where very fine dust can be separated and then this gas goes to stop to burn. So, these uh, stops are used to preheat the air uh, and which goes to the tier in the blast furnace through the bustle pipe. Um, and slag and metal comes over there. So, the important sections of this is the blast furnace, hot blast supply that is stove and, and the gas cleaning and storage this is this part and then you have a liquid product section where the metal and slag you take them out process control for the whole the plant and the raw material handling this is also a special um, section. So, I will go through it uh, in an overview one by one. So, if we come to the blast furnace. So, major region of the blast furnace that you will see this is a throat the top cylindrical portion. So, it is a cylindrical in um, design the top portion which is known as throat. Then you have the stack region which is extended up to belly. So, from here to here it is a stack region which is continuously increasing in diameter and then you have that valley region which is again a cylindrical one and then you have a boss region which is uh, reducing in the diameter and it goes up to the heart region and then there is a heart region. Of course, uh, uh, till now the heart uh, region used to be cylindrical in order to accommodate more and more metals now in fact this is also increasing in diameter as you go down. So, this is for the modern blast furnace with the capacity probably more than 10,000 ton per day uh, where this sort of construction is taking place for the new blast furnace. And this gives a line diagram of the internal uh, design of the blast furnace. So, you can see for the throat region the diameter and all these even the strike, strike region and boss region they have a particular angle uh, like a stake angle and boss angle and these are very important depending on the quality of the um, raw material, the repose angle and others. So, um, for a smooth flow of the solid these are very important otherwise uh, it can create quite a lot problem in functioning the blast furnace. 
So, these are very critical parameter similarly the diameter of the valley um, and then you have a hearth diameter uh, to your level is just uh, uh, near the top of the hearth and then you have the tap hole and other thing the armor plate comes over here. Um, even this uh, height is very important and again this uh, height of the stack region depends uh, what sort of raw material you are putting into it. So, the diameter keeps on increasing because um, swelling of the pellet and ore occurs and to accommodate that one has to uh, uh, keep on increasing the diameter um, during the indirect reduction and in the belly and both region direct reduction comes and cohesive zone. So, after that um, contraction of the or melting and fusion occurs. So, really it is start contracting. So, your diameter is start decreasing in the Bose region. Large furnace usually are characterized um, based on the total different types of volumes are there based on the volumes. So, one is the total volume and total volume uh, measured from the uppermost brick of the hearth that is uh, uh, your throat one. So, zero level burden in that uh, and then <coughs> up to the uh, it goes up to the uppermost brick of that uh, hearth region. So, that is the total volume and the uh, inner volume from the tap hole that is uh, iron or slack tap hole to the 0 level of the burden and the burking volume which uh, many times uh, it is specified in terms of productivity the burking volume uh, which is defined at uh, from the 2 level to the 0 level of burden and that is known as the burking volume and most of the blast furnace uh, many times are defined in terms of burking volume and sometime in terms of inner volume. So, that gives you the idea when somebody says well the working volume of the blast furnace is this much. So, it is around 5000 meter cube nowadays or even uh, 6000 has come as the time is passing. So, that is a huge volume. Blast furnace refractories and cooling. So, the second one about the blast furnace refractories. So, usually it is a high duty fire clay uh, you use uh, at the top and in the stake region and high alumina brick in the hotter section. And not only this I think we will uh, you will see later beside that uh, cooling and other thing you use it because abrasion is a very important uh, uh, problem in the stake region. Um, in the throat region because the all material is uh, falling down over there and directly hitting uh, the bricks. So, abrasion is a very important property for the uh, refractories. So, one has to be very careful in choosing the refractories in the top region which has a high abrasion towards this raw material. Then uh, for hearts usually made of carbon brick um, because it is a high temperature and you do not want a very reactive uh, uh, brick also uh, which can react with the uh, metals. So, the natural choice is carbon and similarly arm, armor plates are used at the top of the burden design. So, this is where when the raw material is hitting um, to the armor plate. So, that really give the protection for abrasion and wear. And cooling is provided to enhance the life of the bricks from heart to stake region and that is in the next few slides you will see. So, the cooling is uh, uh, provided uh, you have a plate 
type, step type and hybrid type. So, in the plate type uh, cooling you put the cop copper uh, plates, uh, actually the right one is showing though it is not that much visible, uh, it is a copper plate cooler um, behind the brick um, which is cooled by water and this is copper step cooler. Um, and these two types are used depending on the severity of temperature and that is how you cool the um, brick. This essentially shows the arrangement of this uh, step cooler in the uh, stake region and as you can see the um, quite a big erosion takes place up to 10 millimeter per month and this is the typical photograph of that erosion the upper in the upper zone. So, it is very important to select the right refractories and uh, right cooling uh, procedure to minimize <coughs> the consumption of the refractory which are very expensive. Uh, so, this is in the stake region and uh, <coughs> in fact, this shows a little bit. Uh, now, in the modern uh, blast furnaces even a cast iron step cooler is used. So, water goes through this and comes out. So, this is a cooling one. Um, sometimes the collapse of uh, <coughs> lining, you can see if the cooling uh, has failed and other thing collapse of lining can occur um, in the upper region. The way these are inserted, one is a vertical plate embedded steel segment embedded steel segment with vertical plate. So, you can see this is sort of an armor one in the upper region where the uh, raw material hits. So, it protect that. So, cast iron step cooler and cast iron step cooler with vertical plate. So, different different types of cooler in a different in the different region uh, depending upon the uh, nature of the cooling uh, they can be used. So, this is sort of a design of the modern blast furnace which we discussed before. Um, so, point should be noted here this is a throat armor design um, that is actually is protecting the brick uh, so raw material when it falls down. Um, the Bastille pipe this is uh, actually it, uh, if you look at that. Uh, uh, gas is injected, gas and fuel other things in, injected through the tube <coughs> and this is very important portion on that one. And the point is this uh, because uh, there are about 30, 40 tubes um, around the circumference of the blast furnace and it is necessary that all the tubes should have the right pressure and should uh, deliver the right amount of the gas or fuel. So, it cannot uh, it cannot be in one tier a uh, less amount is going in another tier is high amount is going and th that will create the operational problem and uh, other problem in the blast furnace. So, for that pur uh, purpose the Bastille pipe is needed and it makes sure that in all the tiers um, the pressure and uh, uh, feed rate is maintained and that is the very important for this Bastille pipe. Uh, and these are the tubes through which the um, gases are going and fuel can be injected from the side and because it carries the hot blast air which is uh, uh, which is coming from the stoves. So, what you do in the stoves the furnace gas which uh, comes from the top as we saw in the previous slide. Uh, these are burnt through that and these are the checker bricks which gets heated up and the best gas goes uh, to the chimney and when you need a hot air, uh, air you reverse the cycle and that one you blow the cold air and due to this uh, checker um, uh, which absorbs the heat bricks you get the hot air which goes to the bustle pipe. So, these are the stove uh, which are used to preheat the air and this one goes to the first pipe and this goes to the tuya. So, usually the temperature depending 
it can range from 700 to 1300 degrees Celsius uh, uh, um, in the blast furnace. Uh, so, blast furnace charging system this is also very important. The top of the furnace is provided with a double bell charging system. Um, even some of them nowadays is coming as a well less. So, so, examples are given of some of them here. So, proper charging of various material coke or flux center is of great importance as it affects the pro productivity, fuel economy and the smooth functioning of the furnace. We will talk about this later. So, a good charging system is needed to take care of no gas escaping even distribution of charge, less segregation of the charge etcetera. So, usually the double well uh, used for this. So, in the first one you get the material charge and the second one lower one is closed and then you lower the first one. So, material drops down on the lower one and it goes up. So, again it sealed. So, no gas can be passed through this and then the materials this is lower down and materials fall through that. Then of course, you have a uh, chew it and uh, uh, that thing which distribute the material uh, and the different form uh, in the blast furnace and you can change the angle of this. So, what sort of angle the layer should have various layer of coke, sinter, pellets <coughs> or ore. So, these are various designs by which you can control the um, uh, charging of the material in a proper way and even the segregation up to some extent. Um, so, th these are also very important uh, uh, equipment in the blast furnace. Now, we have a various type of attacks occurring in different zones of a blast furnace. So, if we look at this uh, figure, this is a typical blast furnace side wicker we have taken stake region, belly, boss <coughs> and the hearth. So, with respect to that if you look at the thermal shock, thermal shocks is mostly the stress thermal stresses which are uh, created uh, due to the contraction and uh, expansion of the heat. So, you will see it uh, maximum one is occurring in the stake region where this raw material actually is subjected to quite a bit thermal stresses. So, if it is pellet, pellets are the more susceptible or maximum su susceptible for the thermal stresses and in fact they disintegrate. If they disintegrate then the permeability affects and then the production will affect and in fact the blast furnace will not run smoothly. So, it is very important to know about the thermal shock of the material. Similarly, the heat load because most of the heat is uh, released in the combustion zone where the tear is. So, that is how uh, it is showing the figure and then of course, the other reaction where some exothermic or endothermic reaction occurs. And then you have a alkali and chemical attacks. So, most of the alkali uh, actually vaporize here like sodium, potassium these are the important one and even the zinc. Um, which vaporize and it uh, condenses. Uh, so, it goes up because here temperature is quite high about 2000 degree Celsius uh, 1800 to 2000 and due to which it vaporizes and goes up here it reacts with other mat material again to Na2 or K K2O <coughs> and this uh, um, actually deposited in on the surface of the um, center or pellet or whatever material it is and it makes it sticky. So, sometime in the, and then at it goes down because this is a colder region. So, it deposits. So, essentially it is really not going out and it when these pellets or thing comes down again it vaporizes here and goes. So, it is a sort of a cycle uh, in cycle form it is going. So, it builds and many time it attacks refractories. So, you get the scaffolding and other thing over here. So, material get stuck over there where you get the scaffolding and other thing. So, it is very essential that alkali uh, content should be very low uh, in the raw materials whatever uh, is used 
um, in the furnace and some of these alkali goes into the uh, slag and very little in iron and some in the top gases. So, some is the oxidation. So, most of the oxidation actually it occurs here C plus O2 CO2 which is a exothermic re reaction. So, that gives quite a big amount of heat and which you can see here. So, that oxidation occurs there and then more coal is there and that is so how it starts reducing um, all these gases so, and then um, mostly it is a reducing atmosphere here. So, most of the oxidation atmosphere prevails in front of the tier um, and not here. Here again you have a FeO plus CO gives you bit Fe and CO2. So, bit oxidizing atmosphere comes over there but mainly it is over here. Similarly, abrasion and erosion as we discussed before. So, abrasion is very high in this area where the raw material is falling. So, that is a very high rate of abrasion here and then it becomes uh, uh, as it starts reducing and like that and fusion and melting really there is not much erosion in the down part. So, uh, this gives you a, an overview about uh, various type of attacks which blast furnace faces uh, in brief. And this uh, slide in fact gives you uh, or showed you about the attack mechanism and the refractory which one should use. So, now in the upper stack region because abrasion is a very important one and uh, some temperature fluctuation is less, but abrasion and impact these are the two main. So, you should have a super duty fire clay cast iron step cooler with vertical plate which we have seen in the previous one. In the middle stack uh, medium temperature fluctuation gas erosion oxidation and alkali attack. So, causes spalling wear and brick detail. Uh, so, here you need a super duty fire clay and some many times even the silicon carbide. So, cast iron steps cooler and silicon carbide refractory insert into that, that is the one in the modern blast furnace you use it. In the lower stack region where it is a high temperature fluctuation and more gas erosion which is coming from the um, two in fact from the cohesive zone actually it is coming and uh, where the permeability of the coke is, uh, is the one which can uh, let the air pass then the fuse zone. So, usually the velocity is little higher. So, gas erosion and abrasion oxidation alkali attack and thermal fatigue these occur which we discussed in the previous um, slide. So, what you need here corundum silicon carbide silicon nitride with the copper step cooler or machined copper plate which we saw in the previous slides. Um, so, the that sort of uh, refractory you need it. In the valley region it is a medium temperature uh, again medium to high temperature alkali attack gas erosion and again you need a copper strap or machine copper plate cooling mostly machine copper plate in this region is used uh, with high conductive graphite or silicon carbide brick. In the Bose region high temperature slag and alkali attack quite pro predominant in this abrasion medium temperature fluctuation. So, you need a silicon carbide silicon nitride uh, uh, brick uh, mostly with the copper plate ma machine copper plate and high conductive graphite or silicon carbide can be used. Raceway is a very high temperature oxidation water and oxidation slag attack erosion damage from escapes caused by stress cracking deterioration wear loss of cooling element and tears. So, this raceway and tier re region one has to take proper care. So, silicon carbide self bonded refractories are used, alumina chrome double densified, low iron and S contained graphite in contact with cooler. And for the hearth oxidation uh, zinc slag and alkali attack occurs uh, uh, because most of the alkali goes into slag, high temperature erosion um, when you are um, emptying it. So, quite a big uh, high velocity of the slag and metal and which causes quite a bit erosion. So, 
hot liquid causes weird and stress is build up. So, you need a carbon or graphite blocks with super micro pores and water cooling for these. Uh, these are the uh, sort of a trend uh, in the modern blast furnace where these refractories are used in various regions and it is very important because one of the refractories uh, or in one region falls, the um, production gets affected. So, it is uh, important that life of the refractory should be as high as possible and should protect all the material. Now, we will describe a little bit about the physicochemical description. So, we discuss more about the design, about the refractories and uh, um, different attack which uh, blast furnace undergoes. So, these are all mechanical type of things which we have discussed till now. Um, now, we will give a little bit description about the physicochemical thing which is happening inside the blast furnace. So, this figure shows as the material descends downward by reducing gases move upward. So, essentially um, blast furnace is a counter current reactor. When we say counter current, it means the solid is coming down as you know from the top you charge the solid and it is coming down and gases are going up. So, in one way they are facing each other in a counter current form. So, this way it is called counter current. You have also co current where the suppose the gas and solid are going in the same direction. Then or even a liquid in the, that condition uh, these are uh, good terminology in chemical engineering. Then those sort of flows you ca call them co current and you have a cross current when the um, one of the phases coming down or going up the other phase is actually going at 90 degree. So, that is called cross current. So, most of the things in blast furnace is counter current except in the region near the uh, tier where the cross current occurs because gas is going from the side and the uh, all the liquid and uh, solid is flowing down both direction. Other way is a counter current one. So, because the ga hot gases are coming um, uh, from the tube uh, where the combustion occurs the temperature is very high. So, this dash line shows the gas temperature here and the solid line shows the uh, raw material uh, temperature. So, so the thermal profile of gas solid along with indirect and direct reduction. So, what has happened at the gas goes up it is having a very high um, temperature. So, it gives it temp, uh, temperature or sensibility to the solid. So, solid temperature also increases in that. Uh, when you come to this uh, region, uh, there is not much uh, temperature difference and this region actually is a indirect reduction zone. We will talk about that uh, later um, as we move on. And in fact, that this region is known as mostly the direct reduction in terms of chemical uh, reaction. So, this is indirect and this is a direct re reduction, this is like a preheating zone. So, uh, once it crosses that strike region, it comes to preheating, uh, the gas temperature always is high. So, it comes out and the top gas temperature is around 200-250 degrees Celsius and uh, that is how the temperature profile looks in a typical blast furnace.